Hey, what's going on? It's the livest dude on the planet, Dillion Capadone, and I thank you for joining us each and every week right here on the Video Monks channel. And ladies and gentlemen, I told you, you never know who may stop by on the blog live just to tell us what's hot, what's new, what's fresh, just to keep you abreast. And it is none other than American loveliest award-winning actress Meredith Thomas she has been dubbed the Christmas Queen after her roles in six Christmas movies and winning the best actress award for her role in the best gift now this beautiful television favorite appears in four upcoming lifetime movies which are killer advice Dangerous Medicine, The Wrong Valentine, and The Wrong Mr. Right, bringing her lifetime movie count to 14. Wow, that's some work. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Miss Meredith Thomas. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for that amazing introduction. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. You deserve awesome. it. You deserve it. <laughs> your work is that impeccable. Awesome. <laughs> your oh work goodness. is impeccable, Miss Thomas. I mean, I it's 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 only it's only going to get better. Just keep the red carpet out. That's all I can say. How are you? I know I'm on my red couch today. I, I for the last year <laughs> I've been having to just settle for a red couch most of the time. <laughs> we haven't been doing many red carpets here in LA. <laughs> Hey, yes, um, I know. La <laughs> last year has been challenging for us, and that's why I, 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 I pray and I just, I just talk to the movie gods. Just please open up this year. Please let's get get back to the norm and get back to the regular, and let's do what we need to do as professionals. Absolutely, so, not just the movie gods, right? All all the gods we need to we, uh -oh. we we need to get back we need to get back to um a little bit more of a normal life for everyone this year um, i'm on board for that definitely definitely so let's get right into it let me ask you what are some of your limits when auditioning for a role some of my limits that's a good question so i have a I've never done nudity. If that, so, I if I see a nudity in the script or partial nudity, it's just I I'm not against it for people that are comfortable. Like I've been on set and be like, God bless you. You're a lot more comfortable with your body than I am. Good for you. It's just not something that I um, I ever was like comfortable doing. And um, and luckily because I'm kind of I'm, I'm small chested not many people really want to see it anyway so it was it's not like they were banging down my door to do nudity i don't play those characters luckily but anyway so so to see that it's not happening um i do lifetime so you can't have a lot you can't have too many things that you won't do like i just played my first killer um and that that was interesting um there's i've played not nice characters before pretty but i've never played one this evil before and that was a challenge you have to uh decompress from that every day on the way home and just and, and uh, get your body out of that anger yes 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 because i know the motivation what feeds the character people say find your motivation you know you have to reach to a certain place to get to nail that character so i totally understand i'm a thespian myself but i'm a little small p just trying to you know scratch and bite and kick <laughs> but also what were some of your most challenging roles you have experienced where you have to might get in shape or really zone out or get there um goodness i have uh so definitely the one that i just mentioned the killer advice because i i'm absolutely the villain i think and and the challenge there is to not play the villain you've probably heard that before it's um because villains don't look at don't think of themselves as villains they are just people we might say making some really really bad decisions um but they're out there surviving in the fashion that they know how to survive. Now, 
not necessarily in a good way. So um, I think the challenge is to find something real in these people that maybe I would look at and go, I would never do that. I would never say that. I would never be that. That's disgusting. Um, I did a, a stage piece, which is one of my proudest um pieces on stage and i played a nazi woman and to have nice to have those things come out of my mouth to to play someone that that and she was kind of the anti-heroine and what but with the amazing thing with this particular character though she was not very uh good to start she through the relationship with an African-American man. It's a historical uh, fiction piece. With, through her relationship, she she changes. You know, she she evolves. Yeah. And uh, that, so that was amazingly challenging, um, <laughs> but one of the most rewarding pieces, too. So, yeah, so you really had to dig in and find that inner, you know, connection to make it work, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, find something. Okay. You know, it's something that we can hold on to. Um, if, if, you know, we may say we've never been a killer, but there's this famous acting book that says, have you ever been so annoyed that you swatted a fly? So, you know, and build <laughs> on that emotion. You know, I know it seems ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I actually am someone that wouldn't hurt a fly. Like, I will shoo them out of my house. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> your spirit is so awesome but i see the parts you play are you know m mostly aggressive and uh, really upfront. have you ever thought about comedy oh yeah actually um i used to do um I used to be very active as a stand-up comic for, I stopped, I stopped doing, it was never a, um, it was never a plan, let me just stop being a comic. I just, I got so busy as an actor, but I love stand-up and I love comedy and, and I still, and I do comedy. It's just that obviously really? kind of have, I've been so lucky to get into this lifetime movie genre so i get to do the drama which is uh fun too but yeah they you know like they say dying is easy comedy is hard uh but i love comedy and um i've been able to do comedy a little bit more on like not in movies but on like little tv parts let me ask you, is there a, a circle or some kind of union for Lifetime? Because I see a certain uh, uh, actors. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm starting to wonder now. Is it, is, it, is it like a special island for Lifetime <laughs> actors or something? Because I see the same people, but they do wonderful work. But is there like a union or something? Like, what is it with Lifetime? That's hilarious. I should, I, I should start. I should start the the Lifetime Actors Union, but no, it's, it's, you know what it is, and I always say, um, one of the most important things is for in my career has been, you know, repeat customers. You be so good that, be so easy to work with, know your lines, roll with it, easy to, you know, roll with the punches, and that, that the people are gonna, um, want to come come back and work with you so when you see the people over and over again a lot of times um a lot of times some of these leads they were in soaps and we shoot these movies so quickly that you see why soap actors can really adapt really fast to shooting that yes because being highly emotional but student shooting that fast so that's why you'll see a lot of the same people um the other thing is just they we we work fast. I I can tell you that all of so all of my wrong movies, which are by the way, Vivica Fox is one of the producers on them. She always saves the day. She's always um she's always figuring things out and saving us in the, in the wrong movies. So so all of my wrong movies, same director. So repeat business. And then now you know. So now I've worked with Vivica. I think seven times. Um, and nice. Then, and then, and that would be seven times with that director as well. I guess now that I think of it. And then, two of my huge Christmas movies, Fred Olin Ray, same director. So it was nice. Um, yeah. So keep. It's a business. Choose your battles. 
you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say nobody is really um, dying over getting a lifetime movie made, and I and I, I but considering the year we've had, I shouldn't really say that, you know, we're, but there, it's a movie mm -hmm. and we can right. do this and we can make it fun and we can make it safe. And it's, uh, it's, it's a movie. It's just, it's just entertainment. It's, <laughs> you know? it's, I understand. I, well, you say, uh, uh not, uh, try it. Shoot. It's a lot of people trying to get on Lifetime because like, everyone that I know watch Lifetime and the females that I come across, they be they are glued into Lifetime. Now, speaking of 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 problems and 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 triumph, um, how have you transitioned through this pandemic and what were some of the eye opening things that may have caused you to reevaluate your life during these unprecedented times? I, I would say the first thing is I had to adjust to slowing down. You could probably tell by my energy that I don't slow down that easily. Yeah, um, I got my kombucha here. It's like my my, my last <laughs> vice, my little caffeine there. Uh, but uh, I had to slow down, and 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 now I dig it. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, I having alone time and being able to mm -hmm. really focus my energy and my thoughts has been a huge gift for me um the other thing that was really hard is like what we're doing now i have right. never been on a zoom before the pandemic i mm -hmm. i am definitely a people person like literally people were checking in on me and saying how are you we you know we know what an extrovert you are how are you hanging in there mm -hmm. and um, yeah same with so me adjusting to not see not even i heard someone say an actor say the other day even acquaintances like if we if mm -hmm. i came into your studio right now i'm a hugger i'd right. give you a hug you right know? like we mm -hmm. that that physical like connection i i miss connection. it and i miss it at my auditions too having to adjust my acting for yes always for the camera now because I'm, I'm doing it sitting here i'm doing it right here on my phone I, right. i'm having to audition right. day after day <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I totally understand because I'm an extrovert myself and I had to adjust to it's this is vmix call similar to uh, a zoom and thousands hundreds of thousands are watching you right now just so you know you're on prime time in South Florida and we have the uh, live stream link. <laughs> so I um I I a lot of people request me to come to their place but I had to resume to uh, the VMix call, so I totally understand. Now, with all the work that you do, and you you used to you know running and ripping, but what <laughs> does Miss Thomas do for enjoyment? You know, it's such an interesting question because um, I, I think you'll understand this. When you do what you love, you kind of don't need hobbies, right? <laughs> when you get to every day yes. do what you love. So that being said, this may, may or may not shock you. So over the quarantine, I have fostered nine dogs. Nine. So, uh, so that's i mean it's what? kind of it, it's really enjoyable and it's a lot of work so i had i fostered three dogs they all got adopted perfect homes then i took in a mama dog and her baby what? yeah so they what? all found perfect homes although one of them may be coming back to me because one of the homes maybe isn't working out as much so i might get one of my puppies back for a little while back. so um okay so i foster animals um that's helped get me through this quarantine without a doubt there are days that i did mm. not want to put my clothes on and then uh, but i did yeah. because i had to walk the dog <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand that. Well, you, you you got me beat because one dog I had I moved into this condo and the restrictions I had to get rid of my my dog. It was a pit bull and uh, I didn't know that, that you know to after I had to yes, to I have to uh, my friends told me after. They said, "Oh, you should have made it a service dog." I'm like, "Really, dude? Really? You you tell me that now?" But and I ended up Aww. giving it to my tailor. And I gave it to my tailor 
And two days later, someone stole it from him. It was a beautiful gold, and it was all gold with a white chest and, you know, top breed. And I, I just, I was sad for like three weeks. I was just like, you know, I just, I felt like I took the money and just balled it up and threw it out the window. <laughs> so I, I commend you for taking in those animals and those dogs because that, that is a very big responsibility. Now, let me ask you, I, you, I, I mentioned um, four movies that have are up and coming, but what are some of the other projects or business ventures that you maybe have brewing or that you have going on now? Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you asked about that. So I've moved, I've moved a little bit more into, um, I've slowly started to produce uh, and um, ventured into kind of producing. But right before LA went into what we, what was called the safer at home mode, but what went into lockdown <laughs> to a certain degree, um, I had worked with a producer that I've worked with um, for years, but I, we'd never produced together. Um, he's usually hiring me. Well, we, I worked with him on this amazing project. Um, you know what? I should send it to you. Um, but it's called Stat. Yes. Uh, but it's with okay. the number side. Stat. And so um, we did this project. We got it in safely before we did lockdown. And I'm, we're really, really excited because now we're working on our submissions to get it onto the daytime Emmy ballot. So hopefully we'll we'll have some good news on that soon. But we're we're working with our actors. I I was completely behind the scenes, which was new for me. Um, and it's been nice. really cool to um, kind of what I do when I'm not acting is also just try to move other actors' careers forward. So um, this was this was really great for me. And now we're I'm helping get an Emmy submissions together and. Um, I'm just really, really proud nice. of this piece and that I got to come on board for it. Nice, nice. Now, I, I just want to bless my viewers because it's like I said, it's hundreds of thousands watching right now. I would like to show <laughs> some of your work if you don't mind. Let's roll this clip real quick. Oh, wow. I didn't even know you had clips. <laughs> Dad, what have? Yeah, well, Dad isn't here anymore. I to remember that we are on a Christmas time schedule here, and Carson Designs is one of my biggest clients. I will not lose them, understand? Go and get into your next ensemble. Yes, it's true. And Kyle, get down from that ladder before someone gets hurt. I'm, I'm fine. I am not worried about you. I'm worried about me. Oh, hey, Nick, it's me. Listen, I, I just spent a half an hour with her. It's Brent's sister, all right. She's a long-term patient here in a wheelchair. She's needed assisted care living for the last decade. So whoever that was at the reception, it was not Carol Holbeck. You canceled their Christmas bonus checks. My investment firm won't like that. No, uh, I included the bonus checks into their employee severance package as a gesture of goodwill. Looks like you scored big. Congratulations. Ms. McCormick. And please, just call me Dana. Of course, Dana. Did you need to see me? Well, I just wanted to hang back for a few extra minutes and talk to you. Talk to me about what? Holding firms like Bullock and Barnes tend to only look at the financial side of companies under their control. I know that. I would be lying if I said that I approved of what we just did to the Flacco company. Laying off 150 people at Christmas time, it's not the kind of business I enjoy being in. I know. You did what they asked you to do. I just hope you don't start liking it. We just came here to watch you do all the things that Joy is never going to. Going to school, having a boyfriend, playing sports. It's the life she was supposed to lead. You can't keep blaming me for this. You see, this little act of yours won't last. Sooner or later, you'll screw up and they'll revoke your probation. And when they do, I am going to do everything in my power to help make sure that you stay in jail. I miss her too. So don't you dare cry. The versatility. You know, the same sweater. <laughs> 
the versatility is on a thousand. I mean, I, I wow. salute you to the mm -hmm. utmost. You are phenomenal. It's like you can transform into any role. Yes, definitely. Thank well, you. I thank you. Thank I, you. Thank you. I, <laughs> it's before you get out of here. It's thousands watching right now. What is, would you like to say anything to the viewers? Um, for I'm gonna say uh, one thing. I want to say happy birthday to my friend Colleen Mahoney. She's 50 years old today, and she drove me to my audition for the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. She drove me way up to from New Hampshire to Maine, so I could. So that was the beginning of. Um, my life in California. And then other than that, I just want to say, I think with lifetimes, the fans are it. I mean, you guys, you guys make it, you know, we, all of, all of the wrong movies, they keep coming back because you guys keep asking for them and you're watching. And the one thing that I love about um, working with Lifetime is the women producers and, and really the diversity and the, the, especially the wrong movies, they're really women um, driven. We're, we're saving the days, you know. So, um, so I would just say thank you, keep watching, and oh my gosh, please be safe and healthy and let's, let's just make this year, you know, the ex exact opposite of all the sadness and drama of the last. Yes. Are you excited about the new presidency? Oh, gosh, I am so excited. You know, I almost, I almost put on, like, I, I actually had pearls, but I didn't get to dress up for anyone for the inauguration. But then I was like, everybody wants to look at this bougie white girl put her pearls on right now. You know, like, we get it. You've been wearing pearls since day one. Like, you're born in pearls. We get it. So, but I had them on, and then I was like, I had my little chucks, and I was like, nah, okay. It's, but I am so excited. Yes, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I think that uh, we are we are headed in the right direction, um, and we made it. We made it. Yes, I'm happy to everyone that's listening that we made it to where we are now, and when we're just going to go forward and run, and the, all that darkness is going to bring us light. I I I trust that it is. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm going to follow up with you throughout the times on some projects. You can fill me in. And like you said, you're going to send me that clip. I appreciate you, Miss Thomas. And listen, I, 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 I bow down. I bow. I thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank Have you. a good one, okay? Thank you. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that was award winning actress, Miss Meredith Thomas. And tune into Lifetime in case you're not catching anything. She has some up and coming movies that is really awesome. I need for you to tune in. Tune in, ladies and gentlemen. I got some more in store for you. We're going to talk about Fat Joe and DJ Khaled starting an OnlyFans page. Mm, stick around and stay tuned. You're watching the live as dude on the planet, Dillion Capadone.